Let us complete uh, the discussion that we have been performing over the last two modules. We are discussing second order nonlinear phenomena and we have said without deriving that intensity of the second harmonic light is proportional to square of second order nonlinear susceptibility, length of the crystal and something like sin square theta by theta square where theta involves delta k and i 0 square of omega. And hence we have said that in order to get favorable conditions for getting second harmonic generation is you should use a high intensity of fundamental light, you should use as much length of the second the nonlinear material as you can without uh, messing up things. You should have a high non I mean not you the medium should have a high second order nonlinear susceptibility and finally, delta k has to be equal to 0 that is what uh, is going to uh, that is what we are going to continue upon delta k has to be equal to 0. What is k? Is a vector associated with the wave right k vector. What is the meaning of delta k equal to 0? Momentum is conserved in the process of second harmonic generation. Total momentum of the combining photons is equal to the momentum of the second harmonic photon. Okay. So, from here the discussion we are performing is we want to know how it is possible to uh, generate a second harmonic because one problem we had faced already is that uh, the refractive index of 2 omega has to be equal to refractive index of omega and we have said in the earlier module that it is impossible to do it unless you have a birefringent crystal. So, what we are going to uh, learn in this module is how is it that birefringence helps and we have already talked about birefringence, but let us uh, recap very quickly. Birefringence means this you have a crystal which has an optic axis once again we will tell you we will discuss what optic axis is. When light falls on it, it gets divided into two parts. One of the rays that passes through is ordinary ray and the other one is extraordinary ray. In the ordinary ray polarization is the same as the polarization of incident light. In extraordinary ray polarization is perpendicular to that of uh, incident light. And then the most important thing is that for ordinary ray the refractive index of the material please understand the refractive index of the material throughout is the same no matter what the angle of incident is, incidence is. However, for the uh, extraordinary ray uh, refractive index depends on the angle of incidence. So, now what we will do is we will try to draw polar plots with only one circle or oval shape we will not draw contours or anything. We will try to draw polar, draw polar plots of this refractive index for O ray as well as E ray and we will do that for two different kinds of crystals as you will see. So, let us say this is the optic axis. What is optic axis? We will come to it wait a little longer and let us say this is the angle of incidence. Okay. If optic axis is z and I call this angle between optic axis and the incident ray theta, does that remind you of something? Optic axis I am calling z and I am calling the angle between the optic axis and this incident ray to be theta. Does that ring a bell? Does that remind you of something? A theta phi. So, so is it is well I have already said it is theta right. Now, position vector is done this is theta theta azimuthal angle okay. azimuthal angle uh, that can be different right. Uh, there is no special significance of making this theta small and making this theta large we are all we are trying to say is in principle theta can be anything from say 0 to 180 or even 0 to 360 in this case. Now, suppose for every value of theta of pens, this is z, 
this is the incident ray, this angle is theta. So, for every value of theta, I am going to plot the diffractive index, once for the O ray, once for the E ray, once for the ordinary ray, once for the extraordinary ray. Can you tell me what shape I will get for the ordinary ray? For ordinary ray, if I plot so for, for this angle theta 1, I plot n, n o, then for this angle I will plot n o, it will be the same is not it. Because remember for an ordinary ray, refractive index is not dependent on the incident ray, incident angle right. So, I will get a circle yeah and it is a polar plot. So, do not. So, I will get a circle like this, this is a circle I get for n o where O stands for O ray, ordinary ray. If I want to make a similar plot for uh, the extraordinary ray, what will it look like? For an extraordinary ray, remember n depends on the angle of incidence. So, n e, if I call the refractive index of the uh, extraordinary ray, if I denote it as n e, then it is going to have theta dependence, it is not going to be a circle, what will it be? Will it be a square? Will it be a triangle? Yeah, what should, what should it be? Huh? It will be a distorted circle, so uh, it will be an ellipse, right? Because the point is this, let us say this is the uh, this is theta and let us say this is also th this is also theta uh, this angle and this angle are same there is no reason why uh, n should be any different for this position and this position right they will be same but the moment you change it will change in a different way so i'm going to have an ellipse but there are two cases that can be there And this is a good time to uh, learn what an optic axis is. An optic axis is the direction in which if the incident ray propagates in the direction of the optic axis, then refractive index of O ray and E ray are equal to each other. Okay? No separation between O ray and E ray. If incidence is along the optic axis that is what optic axis is are we clear yeah have you understood see n o remains the same n e does not it changes but at some angle of incidence n o and n e are equal that is a property that is there okay so that the line that you can get in that direction that defines the optical act, optic axis right so that is your reference so what i am saying is with respect to optic act axis we are defining theta when theta equal to 0 then no equal to any when theta equal to 180 then also no equal to any okay now, with that I can draw two uh, different ellipses, see what I am saying is at this point and at this point any and no have to be the same, but what happens in the middle? Any can always be smaller than no or any can always be larger than no, if any is always smaller than no then I get an ellipse like this. Okay. Any is shown in uh, dashed lines and in the other case if and at this moment I realize that in this po point my animation could have been better. The other case is for theta equal to 0 n o and n o is equal to any, but after that any is always more than n o then this will be the case agreed. In this one, in the first one, NO is greater than equal to any. 
the second one n o is less than equal to any. When is n o equal to any in both the cases? When is n o equal to any? Yes. When, when the incidence is along optic axis or in other words theta equal to 0 or 180 degrees. Uh, have we understood this diagram? Yeah. Now, uh, let us get done with the definitions. In the first case where n o is greater than equal to any for those crystals you call them negative crystals. And of course, if this is negative then the other one crystals in which n o is less than equal to any those crystals are called positive crystals all right. Now, here let us say I have drawn this n o and any for the fundamental omega 1. Now, I will want to draw n o and n e for 2 omega, but before going further are we all clear? Have you understood this part? Have you understood what is going on? Because the next we have introduced one phenomenon already on this slide. Now, after this we are going to introduce another phenomenon and they will add up to provide the condition for uh, angle tuning for phase matching. So, it is important that we are all on the same page at this point. Is there any question? Is there any doubt? Everybody has understood everything? Can I go ahead? Okay. Now, I want to draw uh, the surfaces for n o and n e for 2 omega okay. and let us say I will draw it for the negative crystal, you can draw it for the positive crystal yourself and it is not very difficult also once we do it slowly. So, first of all what will happen? Will, will a negative crystal become a positive crystal for the second harmonic or will it remain a negative crystal? It will remain a negative crystal. So, you get similar kind of a diagram, yes. Next question is uh, well, since NO is a circle, it is easier to talk about NO. Is NO going to be the same or different for 2 omega generally? It is going to be different, we have already said that, right. So, is it uh, is the circle going to be smaller or larger? For 2 omega, is the refractive index larger or smaller than that for omega? It is smaller, always smaller. So, what I will do now is I am going to draw that circle and ellipse for n o and n e for 2 omega in the same picture, it is just that I will draw it in blue. Okay, understood? Let us go through this quickly once again. Have you understood this circle and ellipse business? For n o, the polar plot is a circle because the refractive index does not depend on theta. Okay, the polar plot means for this theta the tip of this pen will be at the value of n. So, if n is large it will be longer, if n is small it will be like this. Okay. So, since n is n, n o is the same for all values of theta the tip of this pen is going to define a circle. However, for n e it is not going to define a circle. With increase in theta it can either become smaller and smaller, but when it becomes 90 degrees when it goes beyond 90 degrees it will start becoming larger again until it gets the same value here okay. or it becomes larger and larger until it reaches 90 degrees and then it becomes smaller again until at 180 degrees it is equal. Okay. That is how we get these two pictures. The first one where n 0 is greater than equal to n 1, uh, why am I saying n 1 and why am I saying n 0 sorry, where n o refractive index for the, uh, the ordinary ray is greater than equal to that for the extraordinary ray, those crystals are called negative crystals. And the second case where the refractive index for the ordinary ray is less than or equal to that for the extraordinary ray, we call them positive crystals. So far so good, we have understood this diagram. Next we said now for the negative crystal 
I, I might as well have drawn it for the positive crystal, it does not matter. I am just showing you the example. For the negative crystal, now I want to draw the circle and ellipse for NO and NE, not for the fundamental omega, but for the second harmonic 2 omega. Okay. So, first thing we agreed upon is that this basic shape should not change, a negative crystal will remain a negative crystal, but then refractive index for 2 omega for the O ray, it is easier to understand the O ray, so it will extend to E ray as well, will be smaller than that for omega. So, if I draw the surfaces for N, surface for N O for 2 omega, it is going to be a circle with a smaller radius. And what about the uh, surface for N E for uh, the second harmonic? It is going to be a an ellipse, but a smaller ellipse. So, this is what I have drawn. If possible, try to not see the black picture, try to see the blue picture only. It is the same as the black picture, just smaller. Okay. Now, comes the climax. Are you okay so far? Now, see, look very carefully. There are four points at which NO for 2 omega and NE for omega have the same value. Four points at which NO for 2 omega, the blue circle, has cut the surface for NE for omega, the black dashed. Uh, ellipse. Is that right? I will show you one. Look at this point. Look at this point. And this is where it is important to understand polar plots, what it means. The distance from the uh, center that is the value, and angular displacement from z that is theta. Okay? So, where the point where the blue circle and the uh, black ellipse have overlapped is the point where their values are the same or in other words refractive index for the O ray of 2 omega is equal to refractive index of E ray of the fundamental. Okay? that is your phase matching condition. Remember, what was phase, phase matching condition? That the fundamental and the second harmonic have to have the same refractive index. Here it is achieved. Okay, we set out with the uh, problem that you take a regular crystal, the refractive index for 2 omega will always be less than refractive index for omega. But then that problem has been circumvented because of birefringence. Due to birefringence, you produce two rays, the ordinary ray and the extraordinary ray. All right? While the refractive index of the ordinary ray does not change for change in theta, refractive index for extraordinary ray does. Otherwise, it would have been just two circles that would not overlap. So, because of this, because you have two shapes, you have an overlap, some points of overlap, four points of overlap to be more precise, four values of theta at which the refractive index for the ordinary ray with, with uh, frequency 2 omega has the same value as the extraordinary ray for light with frequency omega. So, phase matching condition is achieved. All right. Experimentally, how will I do it? What, what am I doing here? What I have discussed is, this is z optic axis and this is the angle of incidence. We are talking about increasing theta this way. No need. I can, I can move the optic axis. How will I move the optic axis? I will rotate the crystal. For the same angle of incidence, let us say this is the optic, well we are using this for the optic axis. This is the incident beam 
and this is the optical axis of the crystal, I rotate. I rotate until the appropriate theta value is achieved, where you have n o 2 omega equal to n e omega, you are done. Okay. This is why we get second harmonic generation conveniently by simply rotating the crystal. What we are doing essentially is we are changing the angle between the optic axis and the incident ray. Since Muhammad could not go to the mountain, mountain has come to Muhammad. Cannot change incident ray without messing up everything. So, we have just rotated the crystal. Now, remember we had said something else. We had said that the polarization of uh, the second harmonic light is perpendicular to that of the incident light. Do you see why? See, phase matching condition has been achieved between what and what? Omega 2 omega, I understand, but ordinary ray of omega and sorry extraordinary ray of omega and ordinary ray of 2 omega. And as we have said already O ray and E ray have perpendicular polarizations. This is why second harmonic light has perpendicular polarization with respect to the fundamental. Okay. Polarization of second harmonic light is perpendicular to that of the fundamental. Okay. So, so far so good everything is looking nice. Concluding comment for today is this. Nowadays at least for commercial setups you only have you all everybody uses uh, crystals with a single optic axis uniaxial crystals. There are crystals which are multi axial. Fortunately people do not want to use them anymore I have used and believe me it is a pain. Multi axial means you have to turn not only along this, but also along this and along this sometimes. So, if that happens you have more parameters and the problem is you never know you turn in one direction you do not know whether you have reached the correct direction or not, because the other two directions or the other direction that is there may be way off. Okay. If you can get everything correct then you will get very good second harmonic generation. But generally nowadays in commercial systems people do not like to use anything other than uniaxial crystals for the simple reason that there is only one control. You turn in one direction change this value of theta. You can imagine if there is another axis what will happen there will be theta 1 and there will be theta 2 and this theta is different from azimuthal angle that in principle it can go from 0 to 360. Achha, I have shown 4 points right 4 angles at which you can get second harmonic generation. Do you observe that experimentally? Yeah, you do not right. Usually you get only at 1, sometimes you get at 2. Why? Because what it means is if you want to go to the other side, incident angle instead of going this way, the light has to go this way. So, it is equivalent to turning the crystal completely. Who will do that? Nobody does it. So, generally uh, there is one unique point where uh, you can get second harmonic generation. So, that is the end of this uh, uh, three module discussion. What we hope to have achieved in this is that we have uh, got ourselves introduced to this fascinating world of nonlinear optics a little bit without deriving anything. And secondly, we have at least understood one operation that we do regularly in lab and that is happily turn the crystal and see that you get nice blue light coming out. Now, what we will do next is second harmonic is done in the next module we will try to discuss a little bit about some frequency generation and we will talk about two kinds of phase matching. And then we will go on to discuss the next step of second harmonic generation or some frequency generation that is optical parametric uh, amplification or optical parametric generation to start with. See we are talking about generating some frequencies so far. It is also possible to generate different frequencies, difference frequencies. Okay. That is where we will get to and then when we are done with that discussion, we will try to discuss what is there inside 
uh, the optical parametric amplifier. And with that I think our discussion of instruments will be more or less done, then we start discussing uh, actual experiments. We have already introduced pump row, but then what we can do is we can start with the classic experiments of Amenswell, then go on to uh, other pump probe experiments. Then later on we are going to talk about experiments that involve this nonlinear properties as well. We want to talk about Raman uh, experiments and all. So, uh, we will need this uh, later on as well.